Look, man, numbers and style indicate this is going to be a very fan friendly fight. Esparza just came out through a bomb. And that's just the kind of fight Alanis wants. And this is the type of fight that I was expecting. Alanis has a damn, a really good right hand. There's the right hand. That's the punch that, that Esparza's going to have to watch out for all night. Alanis, as you can tell, is from Argentina. She's got a flag on the side of her head. Nice, nice punch right there. See, as far as already respecting the timing of the right hand, so she's on the back foot boxing. That, that's going to serve as far as well. She needs to have the box early in this fight. Nice movement from Esparza to avoid all those shots from Alanis. You know, it was interesting to see Esparza come out and just throw that haymaker right away. That's exactly what she did a few fights earlier against Yvette Zamora, but she was dropped out in the first round at that point. So, her aggression was interesting. Jab's going to be a big a big uh, punch right here for Esparza to control the jitteriness of the upper body movement of Alanis. All that doesn't might mean nothing if you're just popping that jab in her face. Just like that. Even if it's on the back foot of your Esparza. For those not familiar, all women's professional bouts, two-minute rounds. So it's fast and furious. Esparza going for a home run right there. Overhand right that just missed. I think she wants to test Alanis, who's, again, fighting the United States for the first time on a much bigger platform than she's ever been on before. And there's that three jabs in a row right there, and that's keeping Alanis in check. The jab's going to be the key right now in these early rounds where there's so much nervous energy and excitement by both champions, especially Alanis. Nice right hand by Alanis. And there's that right hand I was talking about, Alanis. Three straight right hands that she's throwing. Esparza. Love that camera angle. Round two, they both come out again. Hands flying. This type of fight is going to benefit Alan Easton. You heard it in the corner. Of Esparza by James Cooper. Calm down, go back to the jab. That's going to control everything. But Esparza can't help herself. This is the fight she likes to fight. Esparza said she brought in bigger fighters to her training camp to replicate the power that Alanis would have. So she's a, prepared for a heavy hitter. Good combination of that as far as a, a one-two downstairs just to land a, a left hook upstairs. Very unique combination there. And whenever you're dealing with a jittery fighter with the upper body, that's what you want to do. You want to aim at the chest. You want to aim at the torso. Because that's not going to move like the upper body, like that's the head is. Chris, a lot of question marks surrounding Alanis coming into this fight. What do you think so far? I think this is the Alanis we're used to seeing or have seen on tape over the last couple of years. Volume punching, aggressive, good right hand. It's going to be a very tricky fight for Alanis Garza. Yeah, and it's tough to time jittery upper body movement like that because you don't know when they're going to pounce in with punches or when they're just, you know, uh, uh, fainting and moving their upper body to be uh, frustrating you. Sometimes these rounds are so tough to score because there are only two minutes and there's so much action. Good body shot by Esparza. Like I said, when you're dealing with a with a, with a, first, a fighter with a, a good upper body movement, the thing that's not going to move is the midsection. So that's the way. Good jab right there. Three solid jabs by Esparza. That's keeping up. National flag. The other half of the soccer team, Boca Juniors, where Diego Maradona once applied his trade, and again they come out like two Rams and collide in the middle of the ring. Stop wrestling. Not a unique strategy for Marlon as far as it, but it's very interesting to see in two of these three rounds for him to come out like a man of the China show. Work out, work out, work out. Work out. Uh, I guess a mature thing to do for a champion because you're giving your opponent a, a chance to land something by helping her with the aggression. And it's cost as far as the before. She's been knocked down early by doing that before. That's what she needs to be doing. That jab right there. Oh, straight right hand. 
work out was going to set up the right hand. But you got to keep your range. As far as has good scent work, she doesn't smother herself. That's what you, she, what you need. You have a, a feisty fighter like Al Alanis, she's going to run into oh. something eventually. Oh, nice jab. And that forced the Spars back. Work. Bravo, bravo. Yeah, it's a good fight. It's a great style matchup. Well, Gabriella said, I'm not going to take a step back. I'm going to push the pace. And she's doing it. She's actually, this is actually a, a good round for her. She's landed some good shots. She's pushing as far as the back. She's controlling the, 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 the range. This is her best round so far for all of these. Chris, there was an argument this should have been the main event tonight. Yeah, I would have made the main event. You've got some terrific women's fights main eventing over the next uh, few weeks. World Championship fight, three belts on the line between Aspars and Alanis. Yes! Main event is that a word? Uh, it is in boxing vernacular. Uh -huh. Fair rider. Nice <laughs> left, yep. That was a well-timed hook right there by Esparza. She was letting Alanis get over anxious and aggressive and caught her with the right or left hook. That body shot. It was a really good round for Alanis in the last one. Hey, our director Jeff, man, they're coming out red hot every round. You got to be ready. You got to be ready in the truck. <laughs> Jeff knows. Good right hand by Esparza, but look at all Alanis just ate it up. Keeps coming forward. Not intimidated by any of, of the power of the punches of Esparza. All right, Chris Mannix has the task of scoring this, Chris. Good luck. I have no idea who's winning. It's been challenging so far, but I've got a two rounds to one in favor of Marlon Esparza. I thought Alanis did enough to win in that first round with her power punch. I thought Esparza's accuracy in that third round, Sergio gave her a very Watch slight out, edge, but every single one of these first three rounds has been highly competitive. Competitive, and I agree with the 2 1 to Sparza, but uh, yeah, very, very. You can see Alanis is following her game plan, so even though she may have maybe lost those rounds, she's implementing the strategy that she's planning to, to win this fight with. Let's look at her copy box numbers. I bet their hands are bleeding from all the button pushing. 29 landed punches for Esparza, 28 for Alanis. And the edge Alanis might have with some of these ringside judges, that huge disparity in punches thrown, 172 to 106. That's what we expected. Alanis is the volume puncher of these two, but Marlon Esparza could have to get active if she's going to win this fight. And listen, that's what they like in, in Texas. That's what Texas judges like. They like the, 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 the more active volume puncher, whether he's landing or not. As long as you're coming forward trying to make the fight, Judges here like that. That's what our Uber driver told us the other day, didn't he? He was at your fight against Vera in Texas, and I said, who do you think really won? He goes, well, Texas judges like aggressive fighters, and that's why they gave him the edge. I paid for the Uber, because Lord knows you're not. <laughs> and we got a cut over the left eye now of Esparza. And that's, that's one of the... Bonjour tout le monde. Isaac de Gbo est un boxeur britannique d'origine ghanien, né le 26 septembre 1994 à Accra. Passé professionnel en 2013, il devient champion du monde des poids Supercoq WBO le 28 avril 2018 et battant par KO au 11e round JC Magdaleno. Dogbo conserve son titre le 25 août 2018 par arrêt de l'arbitre au premier round contre le japonais Hedenori Otaki puis est battu au point par le Mexicain Emmanuel Navarrele le 8 décembre 2018. Il perd également le combat revanche par arrêt de l'arbitre au 12e, 12e round le 11 mai 2019. Merci de votre attention et à la prochaine.